Hello and welcome to the DDO stream. This is Shikajo and Shikajo Explores DDO. Uh, I'm currently in House Kundrak right now on the Kenneth server and we're going to continue where I left off two weeks ago with the Vault of Night series uh, and I'm going to be in going into the Vault of Night part three, uh, the Kyber Jungle. Um, see, I'm playing my Paladin again, Shikajo. Uh, let's just see, I'm just going to fix something here. I just had to make sure that the stream was actually up and running there. I'd turn that off. Well met. And I just got the sound. We just had a follower come in. Let's see if I can see who that is. I'm watching on the dashboard there, so. Technical 13. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Thanks for the follow again. <laughs> I think you were following before. Anyways, uh, this is uh, part three. Uh, and there's a, a lead in to it. So to get to the quest, you've got to go through a little wilderness area called the Gateway to Kyber. And Paddy No is uh, joining me again, as he has often, which well I, met. I really appreciate, uh, because uh, having a rogue is always helpful to deal with traps, and there are definitely a few traps in this one. Now, this particular uh, little jungle area leading up to the actual quest area is full of trolls. It's just a short one. People often run through it uh, simply by... Uh, oh, Cobalt... Scribe, thanks for the follow. It's hard to see. I've got it really minimized. So yeah, thank you for the follow. I'm not sure that the uh, the chat is working. Although of course, if no one said anything in the chat screen, I might not see it anyways. Might not be anything to see. As you emerge from the gulf, but anyhow, uh, as I was saying, some people t go invisible to run through this little section. Uh, just to get through it, because you don't really need it um, I if you're trying to get just to the the quest itself. And this quest has a lot of experience. Uh, it's very popular to do at this level. Again, level 9. Um, but it is worth, I mean, running on normal. Well met. We are, we're looking at a thousand XP uh, just to do this little area. Blackheart trolls have made their home in the shadow of these trolls. And thanks for the follow. Only that. Kimpy. Thank you. Much appreciated. So, tons of trolls well in this area. <laughs> and another. Again, much appreciated. To look over and see who that is. Normally, I shut off the stream so I can't actually see it running. Shoe heels. Thank you. So it's not too big an area, uh, although sometimes, and I recommend this, if you're running this and the group hasn't all entered at once and one person goes forward and they go invisible or they just decide to desert their way through and not kill everything along the way, they may have dragged all the trolls to the end and they're not all dead and then the people enter behind them and all the trolls are still alive and they're all at the end here and then that leaves the next person with having to kill them all, um, and if you're doing it at level, and now you've got this suddenly this army of trolls to have to deal with, and you've got to deal with them to get through the door uh, to get into the next uh, uh, to get into the main quest area. Uh, try not to do that. You know, think of your party members. That can be difficult. I've run into that because if you wake them all up at once, uh, you can get into like a 
a yellow or an orange or higher dungeon alert level, it can make it even more difficult to kill them all. Especially if you're running on elite or hard mode. Just something to consider. I've, it doesn't happen too often. Sometimes it's not an issue at all. Uh, but I have had it happen to me. And then uh, I've died trying to get to the quest because all the trolls were there. Although there is a shrine right here you can resurrect, but if you're just resurrecting and uh, resurrecting and resurrecting, but you can't kill all the trolls, then you can't get through here. Right now it's blocked. You've got to kill these soothsayers, a certain number of them. And when you do, that completes the quest and opens the gateway. And it does rest you. So uh, while that shrine is there, it's more of a resurrection than anything else. Uh, stepping in gives you full rest as though you completed a quest, although you're stepping directly into the next quest. So no worries about spending spell points or uh, you know, action points or anything like that. You're all set when you when you go in. When you're ready to go. Alrighty. Oh, right. I'm gonna bring the higher just in case. We're level nine, and at level nine, uh, cleric hirelings can do raise dead, uh, if need be. I'm gonna leave him behind at the moment but at least he's here, uh, just in case something comes up. Dirty Dexter, you said that it sounds funny? Uh, is that the referring to all the trolls? Sometimes there's a chest here. Uh, sometimes the rare is here, which he was, and we just killed. Um, he just looked like it. He was kind of invisible when he killed him. Anyways, part of the storyline for this quest, that inevitable that's up there called the Marut, well, the, the type, creature type is inevitable. The specific one is a Marut. Um, is here to kill Vale, the, the person called Vale, and we're here to stop that. Yeah, the troll thing? Yeah, okay. So I normally go up there where I just was there, because sometimes there's a chest there, sometimes there isn't. Uh, there is always that look collectible, so if you're into collectibles, it's a good spot to go grab one. This door uh, is tricky. I'm going to show them the door trick. Just letting Patty know. Okay. Know the door trick. So if you want to be running at the door, I'll pull the lever. So what you do is this door is trapped. The trap's on the other side. So what you do is you have your party running at the door and then you pull the lever and immediately run towards the door, and then as it opens, you get past the trap before it goes off. And then you're immediately into combat. Sometimes there's a rare here, which, as you can see, he's here today, which is nice. And then his chest is here, and that should be trapped too. And there's the two, There, it's a force trap. It, there's no resistance for that. Yes, it's literally trolling something dirty, trolling someone. Dirty, dirty Dexter. Two control panels, as you can see. And a trap over here. Yeah, I have no jump on this character. So you see where the trap would be. You can get around it if you don't have a trapper with you by going to the sides. The trap will still go off, but you don't get hit by it. Did I say it was in Cannon server when I started? We're on Wayfinder server. I just realized that. Yeah, we're on Wayfinder server today, not Kenneth. Just in case you were wondering where we are. We're on Wayfinder. It's my, my home server is uh, Kenneth. There's lots of Dro throwing spells around. Something to be aware of. Now this one, there may be a boss troll in here. He's not here today. If he was, there would be a chest in here, most likely trapped, and uh, don't mess with it if you can't disable the trap, because uh, the electrical trap is lethal. I've had an entire party wipe in this room because someone was not careful with the trap, and we happened to all be in that room and everybody died from it. Now this door, which is open right now, will close when we pull this lever, so you will end up dividing the party 
if you're not careful when you pull this lever. And it won't open again until we're done with the fight. I believe it's the fight with the elementals? Coming up, I'm not exactly sure what triggers the opening of the door. Uh, but you'll be a while. Um, and you don't want to linger here too long unless you can range those guys up top. There's another uh, rest shrine here just to be aware of if you need to come back to it again unless you can take out the guys up top just run past it and my companion here does have ranged attack I don't you can see the piles of rocks here for the earth elementals the Marut was up here and he was doing a little speech once his speech is done that's when these earth elementals will wake up Oh, there he comes. I thought he was there already, but nope. So, once he's done his little talk to us, that's when these guys will wake up. And the door over there will open, and some dro will come out. I guess I could actually have the higher line here. Give us some healing. The Vault of Night series is is a uh, is paid content. It does have epic levels, uh, and the first four quests of it need to be played in order to unlock the raids. Um, but this particular one, Vault of Night Three or Von Three, V O N, Von Three, is very popular uh, because it's a lot of experience. As you can see, fourteen thousand. Uh, this room uh, does have a trap in it. It's force damage. So if you can't undo, if you can't disable the trap, uh, don't have the whole party standing here necessarily. Uh, you, you will get hit by it. Thank you. Little alcove here, boss guy. Uh, it's optional, but hey, killing him. Experience of that 1300. And hey, XP. That's what we're here for, right? There's also a chest hidden here. Hitting that will spawn some uh, scorpions. We're on normal mode, so it, it's not it's spawning as many or as difficult as it can be. And you'll get a lot more experience on elite mode, but again, it increases the difficulty. It's a lot tougher. I like to do this quest. Once I learned how to do it. <laughs> it was intimidating the first few times. I certainly never wanted to solo it. And now I'm okay with that. I just pick my battles one at a time and depending on the character that I have and know what I have to do when. It seems to get more difficult the farther along you go in the quest. And it's got uh, some of my favorite uh, enemies to fight. My top two uh, things to fight in D&D are dragons and beholders. This has lots of beholders. The inevitable has already passed this way. Stand still. All right. There we go. Now this is our first kind of T-junction where you get the choice to make. To the right goes to a dead end, but there's another rare there with a chest and a collectible. So I recommend going to the right first. And then after that you're just going to follow the left hand wall. chest. Power creeps helps in that and beholders are fun especially on a paladin. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that's nice is I've got it set that my uh, 
my remove disease actually does a greater restoration. So when I have my negative levels, <laughs> I'll likely get hit by negative levels from the beholders. I can fix that on myself and my party members. Uh, I <laughs> I did that on purpose. Here we are with another junction. Like I said, I just follow the left hand wall. So I just turn left. Now there are quicker ways to go through it. Uh, if you're just doing it to quickly get the experience out of it, um, you don't need to come up here. It's a dead end, but I like the uh, the collectible. Getting all the collectibles. But it stops you from getting lost too once you're you know as you're learning your way. But what I find is important is this next left. Go down the hole. If you take a look, the breakables smashed. We don't have any of the bonuses for the breakables yet. When I come back up this ladder, uh, we'll have all of it. The ransack bonus. The extra 15%. Because you get it all. Well, not all the breakables are in this room, but a majority of them are. So you don't want to skip this little alcove down here. Oh, Paladin, you get to ignore the negative levels outright. Well, I don't know. I have. <laughs> this is my first time playing a Paladin past le level 8. So, I've never seen that. <laughs> Paladins are, are new to me for playing them. I'm going to have to watch what I do here. I don't have a lot of backpack space. You can hear the uh, the bonuses going off, the sound effect for them. Alright, you take a look. Didn't have any bonus, and now we've gone through the, the mischief, the vandal, and the hit ransack. So that's a lot, considering that the the amount that this quest is worth, 15% bonus, you know, we're, we're talking uh, a lot of experience just for coming into that one little alcove and breaking those boxes. Well worth it. Break all the things. That's one of your favorite classes, Rockstep. Cool. I think Ranger with a touch of Rogue is probably one of my favorites. I used to absolutely loathe the Barbarian, and then I went and played one, and then I fell in love with the Barbarian class too. Okay. Now, while you can go through that door, uh, you won't go very far without the key that's in this chest. Gonna save the shrine. Just letting my companion know that I'm gonna save that shrine. Because if things with the beholders go poorly, uh. Oops. There. Then uh, I want that shrine as a fallback. I think we're just playing safe. Down the, hall to your right, the best for not dying, and Paladin Warlock right now, in your opinion. Yeah. The drawback I find with a Paladin is if you're doing a 28-point build, uh, you've got to spread your points, you know, in ways that I don't like. Uh, this is a 32-point build, just because I have access to that by default. I do 32-point builds. So give me a little bit more to play with. You know, it's handy having a ranged person around and kill that beholder one at a time. Or, you know, nearly dead before I get to it. And there's this telekinesis thing, throwing me around. Die! Holy cow. That was annoying. Alright, that's why I have this. Do you have negative levels, Patino? Uh, no, do not. Okay, so let me know if let me know if you get some because I have greater restoration I can use on you. Okay, thank you. I suppose I could have healed that with my hireling. Now, each of the wings to the left and the right when you first come into this area, there's potential for a rare. So I'm just going to check for the rares. 
I don't see the one on this side, so I'm going to go and check the other side. I've, I have had times when they're both here, okay, so you have to deal with it. That's true, you kind of don't need much con, because if you go under the right enhancement tree, you can, you can use a lot of con. But I'm still learning how the Paladin works. Alright, so there's beholders in and around here. There's one over in the distance there. I believe that on hard and elite there's going to be more of them. Oh, there's one of the switches. We need to find three of these ruins. I got one of the ruins already. <laughs> there's still a beholder here. Oh, there's another one of the ruins. That's two ruins. The reason that we're activating those ruins is this door is the sealed. The third one's up high on the uh, far left. The ruins can be anywhere down in this lower area. Um, the, I mean, it could be like up there or uh, over there. It could be up high or over there. And he's said that it's up high over in this vicinity. But anywhere in amongst these mushrooms. He said he saw it. Do you see how to get to it? I don't know how to get to it. I always have trouble with that one. I didn't see where it was. I was trying to find it. He said it was up high. I can't see. I also can't jump. I may have to take my armor off just so I can jump to things. Well, he's trying to get up there. Okay, I think I know where he's going. Uh, I got it. Okay, he's got it. So it, it is up there somewhere. I've seen them up pretty high. And if you're with a party, as you go along, okay. I mean, even if you're typing in the, uh, the chat, uh, let your party know that you found them, because some people may still be looking, and it's open already, and other people are still looking for the ruins. Just let them know. More sparse as you emerge a sec, the can I check the thing? Domain. Sealed life in the Knight of Chalice is what makes you immune? Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't think I have that yet. I'm not sure how far up that is. Or what level you gotta be. Uh, I don't have the jump to get over to that other area, so I'm not gonna try for it. If you want to, you're welcome to, but just know I cannot join you. Alright. A very a very difficult thing to do is you can see little ledges here through the water and you can, can hopscotch to them and get across like Patty know he made it. I, I'm fairly certain I can't do this. I'm going to try. Nope, I fell. Anyways, and get into that alcove up top there. And there's a... A wizard of a, a warlock or something like that, and a uh, it looks powerful enough to lift a heavy weight. <laughs> an iron golem, I believe it is, uh, up there, and a chest and one or two collectibles. Oh, minimum level twelve. You just run at it to get it with feather fall. You don't jump over there. Oh, okay. One chest and two collectibles. Yeah, one chest and two collectibles. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, to progress further, uh, we're going to be popping onto this. We're near the very end. Oh, he's made the jump from way up high. Once we kill this first little section of baddies, there's three doors here and they're going to open in uh, counterclockwise order, starting with this one. Don't go through the last door that opens. Uh, unless you're ready to deal with three red-named bosses at once. It's not the final fight yet, but it's a nasty one. One's a beholder, a red-named beholder, a red-named spellcaster, and a red-named troll. And unless you want to fight all three at once, don't go through that final door. 
I mean, there is a shrine in that first door. Let's get the loot first. So there's a collectible here, and a chest. I'm gonna try to coax the bad guys in one at a time. So, okay. there's three around the corner. Some people, um, Leroy Jenkins it. <laughs> Some don't. <laughs> uh, oh, you said a clay golem in the heroic? Okay. All right, that's the spellcaster. Uh, and yeah, you can see all three of them there. If you can get just one of them to come at a time, that's awesome. Ahead. Oh, I think two of them saw me. I consider the Beholder the most dangerous one. Oops. That's why we have the Hireling. Well, there's a Shrine right close by too. Get the right button pushed here. There we go. That helps. It's one of those eye stocks is a disintegrate. You get hit with that and don't make your savings row, you're just toast. Um I probably actually I'm gonna cast some buffs on you guys, unless you don't need um Resistance to uh, lightning and sonic, and then I'm gonna rest. I need it now. <laughs> yeah, I guess I you do. <laughs> uh, I didn't think of that. Blindness immunity is helpful in this fight, uh, and you want sonic and electric resistance in this fight that's coming up. If you can't, if you don't have blindness immunity, make sure you have some uh, blindness removal. Um, here, you should summon that. I'll rest. Actually, I'll give it to him too. Since I'm fully rested. We're going to fight that Marut. He's going to be in that final room. I'm going to try to buff all of us as much as I can. This chest here is the last chest that is in the quest, unless you're on the epic levels. Hey, Titan. How's it going? Just gonna check the the chat here. Someone who regularly runs Paladin tank it. So it's, it, yeah, sealed life is nice. This great hall and all the the tiered fives. Statues from a lost age. Chose a yeah, I saw that on the Slack channel, Titan. Congratulations. Congrats. Uh, okay. Make sure the party's all the way, everyone's through here before you talk to Vale, because it will seal that door. Uh, once uh, you talk to Vale, uh, initiate the final fight. So if you want everyone in here for the final fight, uh, make sure everyone's in before you talk to her. What am I missing? Did I cast this on myself? Did I cast these on myself? And the last thing. I now have a negative level because you should have a chaos item. You need chaos item, uh, an item doing chaos damage in order to get through the damage reduction on the inevitable. It's very handy. So some of his punches cause blindness. 
That's why I was mentioning have blindness immunity if possible. So that punch he just did uh, caused blindness. Like, yeah, <laughs> Patty knows blind right now. <laughs> fix that. That should fix everything, but <laughs> we're about to end. Yeah, that's the end of the quest anyways. Yeah, there's no treasure chest. We're done. Guess I didn't need to use that. Check. So we'll just finish out. Chaos and Adamantine together? Uh, I don't think so. And he can't be intimidated. Okay. Yeah, he is a construct. So, I believe if you have an item that does construct damage, that would be helpful to you. Like, uh, for slaying constructs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm still going to have a negative level until I fix that. Alright, there we go. <laughs> That's funny. Oops. Ah, that was the wrong button. I went to do the spell, not the potion. Alright, I'm going to advance the story arc. I doubt I'll ever do the raids, though, with this character. But uh, it's uh, Marek Malicus, or Malcanus, anyways, who advances the story arc for the Vault of Night. I also got a brand new alternator and battery. Awesome. It's a pain if you can't intimidate someone, although I find it's something that I don't often use. I don't often use bluff or intimidate or diplomacy, even if I have them. So, RLC4 for the Haywire Foundry. Um, although the, the quest itself is nowhere near here. <laughs> it's just funny. You come all the way over there and talk to him. Before I go into the quest, I better sell some stuff. I got too much. Now I have a few extra things here to increase my jump because I'm going to want that for the uh, the run really fast and make sure that you make your jumps properly <laughs> at the end of the quest. <laughs> Some of you may know what I'm talking about because this character in heavy armor uh, in shield uh, has a jump of like I think three. If I put a tower shield on him, he has a negative. So <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> But I don't want to miss any of the jumps, because it, it's timed. Once you start doing that end run, you got like five minutes to make it to the very end of the quest. The whole quest isn't timed, but... 2001 Chevy Chaho. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Right. And because the timer's already running, I'll bring the uh, hireling. Don't necessarily need him for this one, but I'll pop him. Anyways, maximizing Intimidate, true. It is helpful. I mean, I as I've been leveling up, I've been putting points into it. Oh, I should have asked if he needed to go and give him the opportunity to go to his airship, because he lost all of his stuff. Should have sent you to your airship. Forgot, you had died. That's okay. heat in these tunnels is almost unbearable. Who would want to live in such a place? Lots of constructs in this one, so again, if you have construct no slaying item, uh, or construct bane item, uh, very handy in this one. Apparently I had more than one action point I could have used. Right. Now, once we pull this lever, I believe it's on a timer? I can't remember. For opening that gate. The lever locks into place and the gate opens. You hear the sound of clockwork gears winding down. Also, it's going to shut. <laughs> so, uh, if I wanted to make sure that I could open that gate again, where that lever was, I could have parked my hireling there and tried to set it up as such that I could have him uh, 
ready to open the gate if I thought I needed to come back in or whatever. But true, at a party, the paladin is you know there for the aggro management and whatnot. Or, well, the tank is if you're building a tank. Yeah. RC2 stops abruptly and rocks back and forth in a daze. It's quite obvious something is wrong. Now I'm going to get uh, probably some yellow numbers with some of these guys. And I believe it's because uh, not that they're Warforge so much as I believe, that I'm guessing, that the drones are classed as barbarians. I can hit one there, see the yellow number? So he has a damage reduction as though he were a barbarian. And you just can't get through it. Because the other ones that I'm going to come across later, um, it doesn't matter if I have a metaline weapon or not, uh, or adamantine, um, you just get right through it. So I think that's the thing. I'm just guessing at that. Anyways, we need to go eventually through those gates, and to open those gates, if you talk to the speaking stone and listen to what he has to say, there's switches to be pulled, um, both east and west. I like to go west first, because it tends to make things a little bit faster when you have to turn around and come back. There's going to be traps here. And I don't need to just run through them. It's just something I'm somewhat apt to do. Traps coming up. Although I think Patty No knows that. Yeah. Yeah, rock step. Yeah, that's. I've done that a few times, uh, depending on the groups that I'm with, with and the character class that I'm playing. I mean, I, I wouldn't do that with a rogue, <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> if you saw that blade just shoot past in front of me there, yeah, definitely don't want to rush that one. Um, is in the alcove behind? Another one? I'm not sure. Oh yeah, maybe not. I do know that there's just more traps, but I'm not sure where the next control panel is. Nope. Okay, I'm not sure where the next control panel is. I know where there's more traps. These blade traps along the ramps going up. Yeah, definitely tank strategy. Now you can just dodge these if you time it right. And you're quick enough. I found the next one. Okay, yeah, there's that. So you, you do have to go through some of the traps to get to the next control panel. There's going to be another trap right here. It just hasn't set yet. Or viewed yet. Viewable. Let's use my English words. And, oh, that one nicked me. And there we go. That's three of them. Thank you. You can use, it, you know, if you want more of the flavor text and you know, talk to the speaking mouth. Otherwise, uh, smash your way through the door. I think it can be picked. I'm not sure. You don't have the strength for it. After the initial fight here, I do recommend pulling the lever on that wall over there by the green gem. Because through there, although we don't need it yet, hopefully we won't for a while, through that little tunnel is the rest shrine. Uh, one of very few in this quest. And again, if you're looking for the uh, XP on the breakables, start collecting them now. Well, it saves you having to backtrack for them watching them. Sorry, what was that? 7400 we're looking at right now? 
which I think is a fair, fair chunk of XP collectible there. Now the lever that we're going to pull in this section will drop these shields, and you can see a, a Warforge there. There's going to be some inside those crates, uh, which will break open on their own. Some of them will break open on their own. Where I told you, um, so that's open, that was closed until we pulled that lever. Uh, the shrine's through there too, it is connected. So, if you need to retreat and run away, you can run to there. Now if you're paying attention to the names, Foundry Surveyor, those are like Ranger class, so if you have priorities, the drones are like Barbarians. Uh, a Troubleshooter is a Bard type, and the Engineers are Wizards, is the way I look at them. So if, if like me, you have a particular strategy of how you deal with things, um, of which ones you would target first if there's a crowd of them, which ones you feel is more deadly. Uh, that's it's good to know the names. Personally, I go after the troubleshooters first because they can do area effect stuff. You know, like one of those disco balls <laughs> make everybody dance. Here's the lever I was talking about. We need to pull for this side. The north wing gate lever locks into place. So now those. Uh, Shorts out the storage area's energy barriers. Yeah, the energy barriers for force fields are now open. Of course, I'll just break them anyways if they are broken. Sometimes I remember to jump. Nope. <laughs> I don't think I can reach it. There's a collectible up top there, if you can see. It's an adventurer's backpack. I don't have the jump to get up there, though. Sometimes if you don't break those uh, crates, you can jump up and climb up on the crate first. playing this recently with a different character, and uh, one of the spellcaster types, I, I assume it was the bard one, like the, the troubleshooters, they kept putting my character to sleep. <laughs> it's like I kept laying down and sleeping, I'm like, no! Stop that! <laughs> it's like, I can't fight then! I was so glad I had a hireling with me, because <laughs> there's a bunch of them around and I'm literally laying there sleeping. Now we need to go back to the other side. There's a quickish way to do that. Oh, it's saying that there's a, it says there's a trap again. I don't know how accurate that is. Okay, so they've activated another trap. They don't like us. Oh, I just saw it there. Okay. So you can run all the way down the ramp, or you can kind of squeeze in here and, and just fall. As long as you don't grab the ledge, you just fall down. No, I grab the ledge. And I pressed X. All right. <laughs> Anyways, that's the quick way to get back to the beginning. As long as you're not grabbing the ledge, which apparently I had it the character pointed the wrong way. And you grab the ledge. That, that could have gone better. Maybe it's just quicker to run down. Again, if you're wanting the breakables, check the alcoves. Alright. 
I'm going to trigger this trap just so they can see it. <sighs> Looks like a floor that you can just walk across, but it's trapped. Uh, hug the right wall and you're fine. If you don't have a someone with you. And while they're not active right now, if I were to jump down to the bottom, that entire bottom floor would have a bunch of spikes popping up. I'm not sure if you can disable it now or not, but uh, I don't know if you want to take a look to see if you can find the control panel. It wouldn't be down there, would it? Maybe he was just showing that it what it looks like. So I thought the control panel was right about in the, you know one side or the other here. So I thought the control panel was on this end. Oh yeah, there it is. For those of you who happen to be trappers and are looking for it, if you're not familiar with it. There. Not only that, eventually, if you get all the traps, it's 30% bonus. Pesky troubleshooter. Now the Mithril Defenders, even though they're Mithril, they don't need a special, like you don't need Adamantine or Cold Iron or anything to kill them. Like, for damage reduction, they don't have any. They're just lighter on their feet than the Iron ones. Even for your clothing and the armor, okay, the now, the this one, down. another, again, the floor is going to fall out, but to a deep pit. So if you go over to the left side, and you see that it's cross-hatched, walk along the second line from this little outcrop here. So count one, two, and walk directly across that line, and you'll be f safe. But we're exploring, so we're going to explore. If you do fall, the floor collapses. there's a hole here, Straight down a and there's a hole here. You go any further past this one, and you end up in lava. But there is a chest. And things are going to get tricky. Yeah. He's going to want this. <laughs> I'm going to want it too. <laughs> As an acid resist. Because... It's going to get burny. I don't think these can be turned off. But you can time it. He probably has evasion. So it's going to help him a little bit. Again, time it. For the acid jets. Are we just trying to get back to that main shaft? I don't think you can jump past those, even if you had like a 40 jump. I don't think it's possible. But with the right timing, you should be able to get past all of these. Just be careful coming out here, you don't fall again. I'm just gonna hug the the wall and take the pipes up. It's a little boring, but that's how you get back up. So circle your way around clockwise until you get back up. Be careful with your landings. Otherwise you'll start to fall again. And if you don't have Feather Fall, <laughs> then it's going to be a quick drop, but I, I happen to have Feather Fall, so it's a little bit easier. When you come out, if you've been breaking things all the way along, hey, nothing broken, that's the way I'm going to be going. Of course, you can just look at your mini-map and you should be able to tell. Okay. 
Where is he? There he is. I suppose I can bring him. And an elemental. A pain to climb out of. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Definitely a pain. If you miss your jumps. I definitely recommend avoiding it in the first place, unless you want the uh, the chest that's in there. It depends on whether or not you really need the loot. I don't need that disease removal one, so I'll let him take it if he needs it. So I can actually... Well, I guess it's an ability, uh, not a spell. But. And if you want the flavor text, just talk with Speaking Stone. Fighting right away as soon as you get in the door. And I try to get this lever as quick as I can. The reason being, it opens the way again to that shrine I was telling you about. Just in case something goes wrong. And you can get to it. We need to make a climb up and around. I love the little dangerous one it is, too. There are ways to circumvent it if you've got a really high jump. And I don't. I, know, <laughs> I can't show you those ways. Uh, there's a trap over here. Uh, control panels underneath the ramp over here. This is actually right in this alcove. while he's doing that. So you can see the holes for all the spikes would come out. So you have to go up. We need to get past those flame jets. Let's see if I can even do this. I bet you I can't, which is one of the reasons why I've done this. I'm going to swap some equipment here. Put on light armor, this, and this. That should increase my jump. Now, to shut those off, there's levers to turn off. Um, I'm not sure if he can make that. Can you make that jump that I just did? I didn't see which way you went. Oh, I see you're coming over there. Okay. Yeah, to avoid the flame jets. I go around behind them and then shut them off from behind. All right. I need to get a jump potion going here. Yeah, I switched my armor <laughs> and my shield so that I could actually do this. Okay. See. There's a lever there that helps turn off some of the flame jets, but there's a flame jet pointed at it, so uh, you have to turn off the other flame jet the levers to turn off those. One of the newly created is freed from its cage. So if you can kind of take the route that I just took, if you're able to do the jump, otherwise you're going to have to bob and weave through the flame jets, and I've never, I haven't the bothered to find if there's a pattern to them, I assume the there is. Jet. Um, the newly created warforge is freed from its cage. As the massive yeah. switch is you can probably dodge your way through the flames. 
One of the newly created Warforged is free now, from its cage. Now, this one, don't just jump in there and pull it. Uh, it's got, there are two control panels. I don't, I'm not sure if you knew that. There's one there. Around the corner. Yeah, and there's one around the corner. Yeah. I'll show you where he's going here. Again, just be careful. It'll be right about here. Yeah, there it is. So you need them both. If you've got a lot of hit points, you can, you know, at just at the very edge of where that cog wheel starts to kick in, so you can just grab it, pull it, and then try to jump back, and you won't get hit by all the spikes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to keep with going across the pipes here. Every lever that we pull is opening a gate down below. Um, I guess I could have just backtracked the way we came. And it's letting out a warforge down below, a newly formed one. As the massive switch is thrown and disables a flame jump. One of the newly created Warforged is freed from its cage. So, yeah, if you can hear the DM talk and he's mentioning that as I do this, we're freeing the Warforged below us. And disables a flame and they, op One of the newly they leave the little cages and wander around. But pulling all these levers is an optional, and I'll get some XP. So, 523 experience for doing One of that. The newly created Warforged is freed from its cage. There's a couple guys there. So, these are the flame jets that originally I said it would be difficult to go by, and so there's, those are the ones, so the top of the ramp would have been over there. Um. So we kind of did it backwards, uh, so that we didn't get burnt. It's much handier. <coughs> excuse me, much handier to have someone <laughs> like a rogue mechanic with a uh, crossbow around. I don't have to walk up and smack everything. Um, right, there's breakable breakables in here. And there's the shrine I was telling you about. Ah. Wasn't putting our proper shield back on. Um. Yeah, I'm probably good without the shrine. I'm gonna go back out the way that we were before. Not only that, it shows that it's connected. So this is the room we were in before, as you can see. And instead of going back that long way, <laughs> I take the shortcut. See if I can do this without grabbing onto things. See, that's the quicker way down. <laughs> Not time I didn't grab onto everything. And now the gates are both open. And we're directly under where, you know, beneath where that shrine is. So in the same hallway but below it. Probably using the wrong sword for this. I just realized I'm using a Borkle sword and I don't think it's usable in constructs. I don't need a Borkle. You know, this just. Uh, this just loops around. It's collectible up there. I'm not going to worry about it. take that. 
<laughs> if you're looking to kill everything and get all the breakables, go part way up this hallway. Or the other one. Get the breakables. And so, like that. It's going to turn here. So we just backtrack and get the other hallway. And apparently things spawn behind you. I have a habit of picking everything up. I got lots of space, so I can afford to do it. So yeah, where is everybody? Should be more good dudes here. We're nearly done, by the way. This quest. Now, I guess I could. <laughs> I have this. There's a secret door there! There's also an iron defenders in the area that have been coming out from over here, which is where we're eventually going to be going. How do you feel about running through a trap? I don't have any problem. I've got evasion. Okay. Now that's a f yeah, force base trap. Behind each shrine is a control panel for it. So two control panels. So I was telling Patty Mill, two control panels, one behind each of the shrines. Uh, I guess you can try to time it for running in need it. I'm just more setting them in there to get the traps, although it doesn't look like we need it for a 30%, we got it. But if we needed this shrine, uh, it's the last one. So, that's where they are. Just show it to you. And a mirror that, because I have my graphics turned down too much, doesn't work. <laughs> in order to have the stream somewhat work. Um, without too much glitch. Yeah, there's very little fighting left. I'm not going to worry about shriding. Alright. Do you have... Uh, I guess... Yeah, you got... Uh, I'll do the puzzle if you want to keep them off me. I'll uh, work at it. I have clubs. Okay. I have Muckbane. Uh, yeah, my Muckbane's bound to character, otherwise I was going to loan it to you. There's a puzzle coming up. Now there's uh, an inner ring of three wheels and an outer ring of three wheels. So that's something to keep in mind. So three and three. Now, you need to turn all the inner rings to a particular symbol. And to find out what that symbol is, look through the bars and you'll see the symbol. Um, I call that the P-E. Different people call it different things. That's what I'm going to call it. But in, it's locked. I can't turn it. How do I turn it? Look at the symbol above. Whatever that symbol is that's above it. In this case, that's an H. The two on the beside it, on the outer ring, need to be turned to that to unlock it. So I've got to turn this. And as you're fiddling with the rings, or the wheels, there's going to be a constant supply of... Uh, <laughs> puddings and oozes and whatnot coming through. Okay, you probably heard that click. I think I, I did. So now I can turn this to where it needs to be at. Now I need to repeat that at the other ones. What's the symbol above this one? The one that I call the ghost. Long story, don't ask. <laughs> So I set this one to the ghost. You hear it unlock. And then I set it to the P. 
PE. I'm not sure if it's the same exact combination all the way through or not. Like every time. Or if it's randomized. And the one I call the temple. Some people call it the house. go. And the reason we do this is to get the gold key. You spy the master control there, now we can go into Willy Wonka's. Oh wait, that was a golden ticket. Oh, sorry. Wrong reference there. Oh, no Willy Wonka's for us. Where's my... I guess I had him too far away. I forgot to bring him into the room with us. Now these guys spit poison. So, unless you have poison resistance, which isn't something you can cast, it's not going to be helpful. No, yeah. This will be helpful. Switch weapons. I'd say it's the final battle, but it's not really. There's a minor running battle after this. And adamantine is the proper thing to get through the DR of an adamantine defender. It's adamantine weapons. Which I don't have. And these iron golems, I believe, also spit poison. Oh, that was nice. Okay. Now, I want to switch this. I'm about as jumpy as I can make my character. Uh, we need to be jumpy for this. Are you ready? Oh, okay, do, do the run? Uh, you know I the run? Will... I do know the run. Thank okay. you. I will be killing everything along the way, just so you know, to, so it doesn't screw All us right. up too much. Okay. So we grab the jewel key, which opens this door. Once we pull this lever, it's going to activate, I believe, a five-minute timer. I'm pretty sure it's a five-minute timer. This wall will open up, and we have a bit of a climb and a long run to do, and some Mithril Defenders will try to stop us. We're trying to get to Haywire uh, before the self-destruct goes off, because we are going to be activating the self-destruct here a toneless voice to blow up the entire foundry. This complex will self-destruct in five minutes. Please get back to If you're having trouble please. with this one, this section here. Uh, take your time with it. You do have five minutes to do the run. It doesn't take five minutes normally to do. So don't panic. It's the quickest way to goof it all up. I mean, you can plan ahead like I did, where I, I purposely uh, you know, switch from heavy armor to light armor. I, I'm using a buckler instead of a heavy shield. Um, you can drink a jump potion. There's going to be a couple sections where the ceiling falls in on you, or tries to. If you're right there, you'll take some damage. Killing some of these mithril defenders, which you don't technically have to do, uh, will get you some, you know, about a thousand experience doing it. Some of these jets are acid, some are poison. There's that ceiling falling in. There's our thousand points for killing a certain number of the uh, mithril defenders. This falls out. Now this is the jump that I was talking about that you want to make. If you end up in the lava, you can climb up the side back into the middle and try to make this jump. But if you can't make that last jump, I'm not sure what you can do, because I'm not aware of a ladder to get out of that. I'm not going to stand around and look, because eh, we're on a timer at this point. Now, I always go on the right-hand side and hug the wall on the left here. I don't know if it's safe to go anywhere else. Yeah, I've always been safe going exactly where I'm going right now, so this is the path I always take. <laughs> is it safe to go other spots? 
Yeah, is it unsafe to go other spots? I don't know. I found a spot that was safe for me to travel, you know, with the flames shooting up out of the floor, and I decided to stick to it. So that's the way I go the way I go, because I know it's safe to take the path that I just took. All right, this door here, don't go through it until all the party's together. Because once we go through, uh, there's very little time before Haywire is going to seal that door. Because once that door does get sealed, uh, anybody on the other side is going to get trapped and they're going to get killed when the uh, place self-destructs. Once you're on this side of the blast door, uh, you're going to be probably okay. Except for if you happen to be standing along this path here. Duck over to the side. It's very important. You don't want to be standing where Samuel's standing. Um, if you listen carefully, you'll hear that there's a rumbling sound. And... Oh, Samuel, you're supposed to not be there. <laughs> Go stand by here, thing. Anyways, you can see that fire going. If you're there when that fire goes by, it hurts a lot. And you have to wait for it to go by before the drawbridge will drop. So that's why you duck into the little alcove there. Where I just was. And then there's this. The very end. Talk to Haywire, because it says find Haywire, so you have to talk to him. Haywire gestures. And then he gestures at the thing. Staff. Do you want the staff? Because I don't want it. You've earned it. Uh, okay, I'll take it. Thank you. Yeah, feel free. Grab it. Grabbing the staff ends the quest. One minute until self destruct. And it says one minute to self destruct. Even if we waited that minute, we won't die because we're beyond the blast door, which is now sealed. I've been told that oh, there it is. There is a collectible. There is a collectible over on the side. I'm not sure if I have the jump and feather fall to get to it. Oh, I missed. Okay. I missed it. Oh, well. But yeah. you could see where I was trying to get to. So there was one over there? Yes. Okay. A awesome. mushroom. A mushroom. Okay. So I'm just going to finish out then. So just so you know that that's there for future reference and if you got a high enough jump and a feather fall or you jump from the correct spot maybe warning. you can get there you can get that collectible oh yeah <laughs> switch my armor back And my belt. Let's put my death block back on. I don't need because I what I was wearing was jump plus six. Normally I don't care about my jump with this character, but I felt I needed it in that. I mean I suppose I could have drank a potion. I do have a couple with me, but I didn't want to worry about it right now. Right, I saved those. Right. Gonna go get the reward. And then the Church in the Cult, which is in House Fjarlin. So I got one more quest lined up specifically for today. These are all a little bit long, all these quests. So all running at least half an hour. Favorite quests. Yeah. And I'm gonna do my enhancements too. I haven't planned them out. So, what we got here? An impressive trophy. That's impressive. I'll take it. Because I have a tiny guild and we're not even level 20 yet. Oh, my enhancements. Before I forget. Um, as you can see my tree, that's what that looks like. Where am I at here? Only my dexterity is at an odd number. Going to the guild ship. Increase my saving throws. Yeah, because you might need those. <laughs> Could be useful for you. 
I don't have the uh, the cargo hold buffs because my guild ship's just tiny. But it is quicker to go through this way. How's Fjarlin? I don't have... Do I pick up a spare one? No, I don't have a spare hireling. We'll go without. Because I don't think that's as big a deal. This is this next one is a free to play quest. And anybody can do this quest. It's level nine. Looks like the other ones were. So you talk to Inquisitor Lightbringer right here in the middle of um, House Fjarlin. Probably pronouncing that wrong, and I don't care. <laughs> Also, yeah, he's right by the auctioneer. Uh, so the Church and the Cult is the name of the quest. I'm just going to share it. I tried to share that with you. I got it. Thank you. And the quest itself is over here. I did advance the quest to Vaughn 5. Okay, cool. I don't plan on doing the raid uh, for the DDO stream, because trying to get enough people together would be a little... Uh, difficult, I think. Plus, I don't know it. <laughs> it's a quest, I'd, or a raid, rather. I just, I really don't know. I've very rarely done it. Uh, Chronoscope I know really well. But Walter Knight I've very rarely done. I also know uh, the Shroud fairly well. Lashen so fairly well, but I've done it fairly often. I always get this one confused with other quests in this area until I step into it and they're like, oh yeah, it's this one. <laughs> but I do know uh, having a trapper is going to be very handy for this quest and having resistances to fire and cold are very important uh, as well for this quest. I won't have a hireling this time, it'll just be the two of us. So no dying. <laughs> I can't res you. <laughs> okay. I'm just outside the quest now. On my way. Sounds good. You've never done the Vaughn raid? Yeah. I, I, I can probably count to the fingers of one hand the number of times that I've done it. And I've always just followed the lead of others. I follow the lead on Tempest Spine too. I don't know how to do it. I could never be the lead on that one because I don't know what to do to complete it. I know the route to take, but I don't know why people do what they do. Like to get the, the shards and that and which ones you need. I have no clue. But I sort of learned I should go this way next, and then that way. Do this. And I can't... Yeah, there is some secret doors, so... Activate that. The silence in the temple is nearly perfect. There will be some undead in a few spots, so... I'll definitely be able to make use of that ability. There we are. And... Didn't want to waste turn undead on one guy. I wonder what that is. Sorry. I had to have an obligatory bad joke in there at least once today, right? If I hadn't had one already. I hear that. Because I didn't want to equip my ghost touch item. <laughs> That's my excuse for that one.
what are we looking at? See? Only 2600 for this quest. So it's, you can tell that there's a, a huge difference with the Vault of Night quest, com you know, experience-wise compared to this one. That's why I think the Vault of Night Part 3 is really super popular. There's a trap in this vicinity. And there's that. That's why I like to be able to auto-detect these things. It's so handy. It's just a shrine here. But having the door open in case you need it, it's very nice. Control panel for the trap should be right about here. There it is. They're just spikes, which are probably the easiest trap to get through, in my opinion. Chronoscope and other raids, yeah. Try not to die <laughs> as often. Yeah. A pedestal dominates the center of this chamber. Go around the room killing everybody in this to start with. There's a book on a pedestal in the middle of the room. You have to read in order to open uh, the doors to the east and the west because eventually you want to go through this north door, which is locked. It's sealed shut and you can't open it. As you finish reading the passage, the doors flanking the pedestal nope. suddenly... Let's deal with fire first. A wave of heat washes over you Lots of traps. Uh, hopefully you know where they all are. I believe there's two control panels in this vicinity. There should be one just the other side of this pillar. Yeah, right in the back... Yeah, on the back side of the pillar. Sometimes you know where they are, but you don't have the ability to do anything about it. <laughs> it's like, ah, what do I do? You run through the trap, the barbarian style. Red zombies, they have lots of lots more health or hit points. I wouldn't call a zombie healthy. Um, so they have a lot more hit points <laughs> than your average zombie. <laughs> it's definitely not a healthy thing. It's a zombie. Okay, trap nearby. I probably don't need to tell him these things. I just happen to have a treasure hunter spyglass on, so my spot is really high. <laughs> there you go. Coming into more. I think there's there's a few coming up in the corridor here. It's a little slow going if you're wanting to get all the traps, but it's that or, you know, get broiled like a, a Burger King hamburger. And that's today's product placement. I'm not sure where the control panel for that one is. I've died from that particular flame jet trying to find the control panel because I was standing in the wrong spot. <laughs> or standing in the wrong spot trying to disarm it and didn't realize I was standing in the flame jet. Oh. Getting another trap sense. Don't see one. Forward we go.
Now the objective of, or, well, objective, yeah, I guess you call it objective. Consecrate the altar of Fernia. Which turns on that little ruin. That door to the north that I talked about earlier, that's why we were in here. So activating that ruin. Then the altar of Rizia on the other side, which will have lovely ice methods and ice traps and frost wolves uh, and many other things <laughs> don't try to kill us <laughs> that's how we'll deal with that yeah so you can see that it's lit then we just have to light the other one the air in yes questing a wayfinder it seems to get cooler with each step <laughs> well no because uh, the flawless victory, the way they've got it set now, is uh, if someone dies, it only disrupts their own personal thing, not the party. They uh, they switch that. So the flawless victory is uh, applies even if you're in a party, it only applies to yourself. So you can't. It doesn't matter if you have someone die within the party. Um, it won't hurt you if you didn't die. It won't hurt your experience. Which I think was a really nice change that they made. Because it did used to be that if uh, any one person died in the party, that uh, experience penalty affected the entire party. I don't remember which update it was that that took effect. Another trap. I don't think I've been showing where all the control panels are. Sorry. Kind of wanted to do that. Point them all out as we go. There's another control panel over there. There's Glacier Wolf. Two Glacier Wolves coming out. I consider this room that we're coming up to is the most dangerous room in this quest. Oh, cool. I can level. I should leave this quest and go level, right? <laughs> yeah, collectible there. Another uh, thing. Now this next room has a bunch of traps in it, some of which you cannot turn off. And I can't remember how many control panels there are, but there are some traps you just cannot disable. probably didn't need that. I'm going to take it just in case. I can't really follow him in, well I sort of follow him in, but... I don't think I'm close enough to get aggro, even with Intimidate. Yeah, that jet of ice coming out there, that will really hurt if it hits you. And so will those. Control panel's over here by me. I believe the control panels only shut off the blade traps in this room, but not the ice jets. And behind this shroud here is a secret door. I use my trinket to act that. Shrine. I don't need the shrine yet, but having it open as a retreat point is nice. There. Now we can purify that shrine once we get to it. And usually the dais right 
dais, however you want to pronounce that, right in front of the altar, is a safe spot to stand. I'll get it now. Should be another control panel over here. And I do believe there's just the two control panels. Oh, no, it's on that wall. Okay. And again, they sh I do believe they're just for the mechanical traps in the room and not the ice traps. For the ice jets. Kind of like you can't turn the lava off in the other room we were in. <laughs> I've died in that room so many times, other times being in this quest. If you don't have evasion, and you don't know where to step, trying to go through. Especially if you don't have cold resistance. Like, by casting that spell, I got 25 cold resistance. It was helpful, but if you're running this on Elite... I'd say that should be open. I guess you just have to approach it. Alright. Should have rested. Just to get my things back up. I turn on deads. And I got a ghost touch item. Another trap. And there's its control panel. I don't know what kind of trap it was. The air is stale and cool. A harmful one. <laughs> <smell of blood. laughs> More traps. I'm gonna keep this sword equipped. It's made of silver, as well as having ghost touch on it, and lesser undead bane, so I believe the final one I think this quest the final guy is a vampire. I want a silver weapon to get through this. I need to conjure some more bolts. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Self-healed up here too. Set. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna start just by breaking it. all these. Hopefully, get all the undead together. Good way to dull a sword. Okay. Now we do have ransack, so I don't need to worry about the uh, breakables in this room. A lone statuesque figure stands in the center. Of the yeah, he is a vampire. So if you've got a uh, a weapon that does light damage, it's going to do more damage to him. And a silver weapon is going to do uh, get through his damage reduction to begin with. Because you need to do that. You need silver to get through the damage reduction on a vampire. Oh, that's painful. Stop phasing in and out. <laughs> Alright, that's the Church and the Cult.
There's some armor that might uh, drop in here. That's nice. I'm probably good, but thanks. I've got uh, unique armor on. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I do. The Yogratha plate. Yeah, Yogratha plate is what I've got. finish out. And I think that's going to be it. Because I can take level 10, but I'm going to do that uh, for next time. And then we're going to start into level 10 quests. So, I think that was the shortest quest. I know it's only three quests, but the first two were longish. I'm not even gonna look at the other stuff really. <laughs> I want the impressive trophy. <laughs> My guild's just tiny. <laughs> Most of those characters are mine. Not all of them. But yeah, we're only level 11. Or sorry, 19, not 11. Alright. Thank you, Patty No, for coming along. And My pleasure. thank you for all of those who, who came to watch and, and join, and those who. Uh, followed the stream. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, when I'm done, uh, the, when the stream stops, uh, our schedule will pop up. Feel free to check out the schedule and see who's coming up uh, tomorrow uh, and check us out. Uh, I will try to uh, upload this stream for those who missed the earlier part of it, if they want to check it out, to our YouTube channel. You can check us out there for any of our old archive streams. Uh, there's lots there on YouTube. And yeah, take care. Happy hunting. <laughs>